Hi everyone and welcome to another special edition of the Philly Brutes Rugby Roundtable uh, as part of our Lions Origin series brought to you by uh, our good friends at Canterbury. We are chatting to just a few of the uh, very special Lions Origins clubs that have produced some of the best and the greatest Lions uh, over the last 185 years or, or so. Uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by Adrian and Sean from Aman RFC in Wales. How are we gentlemen? Good, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, Adrian, do you want to just tell us uh, a bit about yourself uh, and your role within the club? Yeah, so my, um, my name is Adrian and uh, I'm the head coach of the Armman. Um, I've been playing here all my life since um, I was about five years old. So uh, I'm 14 this year, so you know I've devoted most of my life to the Armman playing and now I'm getting the opportunity to, to do a bit of coaching. Fantastic, so, fantastic. Uh, and Sean, uh, welcome to the round table. Just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role within the club. Um, well, I've come on board this season um, as a forward coach, really, to help Adrian out. Uh, I played a little bit of a bit of rugby down here in my time. I played most of my rugby in a village next door, really. Um, but then I, uh, I changed my colours and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we are. So hopefully they'll get a bit of a benefit from me being here and uh, we can kick on another season. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, so Adrian, soon as uh, you've been with the club 35 years, do you want to give us a bit of background on the club? Yeah, it's, um, it's a really uh, family orientated club. Um, everybody knows everybody, um, you know, and everybody knows everybody's business. So um, <laughs> sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, um, you know with a track record that some people have got as well <laughs> but um no no it's a, it's a great it's a great club to be a, a part of and um you know we've got junior teams um and they're all volunteers um they're all parents and stuff that are helping out and uh, uh, you know and you know as long as they enjoy that's the main thing uh we've got an under 14s and an under 16s i believe um and this year we're looking at um getting a, a second team going and with you know with the way rugby's going um, there's not many seconds teams about so you know fair play to the club that we are able to raise another 15 boys hopefully play on a Saturday not yeah. saying that they're going to not saying that they're going to train that often <laughs> uh, you know like uh, like the first team would but um, you know as long as they enjoy and have a couple of pints afterwards that's the main thing you know everyone, exactly. everyone can't wait to get back into rugby and you know I think the, the break of no rugby has done the world of good to, to some people and they're just thinking you know why not have another season so we'll, we'll see how it goes Definitely. How has the club sort of been able to recruit second team players, especially when there's been no rugby, as you said, for for uh, 15 months now? Um, to be honest, a lot of them are sort of like ex-players or maybe boys that have um, retired or semi-retired, um, you know, and a couple of the boys are asking and pulling a leg, come on, come and have another season. And, you know, I'm not going to say that they're going to have the same 15 every every week, but, you know, as long as we can get 15 and they're enjoying, that's, that's the main thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, how, how has the last been, uh, Sean? How's the last year been for the club? Um, it's been pretty difficult, as as I suppose it is in every other club uh, over the country. Um, we stuck together as a group of of players. Um, we did a little bit off season and out of season, try to keep everybody fit and interested in the game. Um, the club itself. Um, we've done a lot of work there, um, out the back, trying to get it to a standard where the club can be used um, and generate a little bit of cash flow, um, which every club needs at the moment. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, so, uh, has the how has the club sort of gone about sort of retaining people over the last you know, couple of years? Soon, as, you know, we've, as I just mentioned, we've, there's been no rugby being played. Um, you know, have you had any sort of feedback to say that people aren't going to come back or has it been, no, I just can't wait, just chomping at the bit? The majority, I would say 90% are chomping at the bit. Um, we've had the odd straggler that has um denied about coming back to play. You know, some have had injuries over the years and then now things have settled and they've had time to recuperate. Some don't really want to come back into it. Um we are in an area where there are five or six other local teams that are very close to us as well, within mile, you know, within a mile, two miles at the time. So it, 
it's hard for all the clubs to keep players and um, and recruit players. But I think this is such a close knit club. The players are honest and they and they're loyal to the club. So we've been lucky in that sense. Ah, oh, well, that's that's great to hear. Uh, and Adrian, uh, yeah, how important is it that the family gets back together over over this summer? No, oh, it's hugely important to us. Um, not only for people's mental health, this you know, they, you know, it's just to get a bit of fitness behind them. It's the supporters. Um, it's everything. It's the kids come to watch us. It's the you know, it's everything. Um, you know, it, everything's been lost without rugby. It's been a tough full time, you know, and maybe people have, well, even like myself, I've taken up running for a bit. I have to, I have to do something. I was missing rugby so much. <laughs> it's just, it's just an excuse to get out of the house, you know, because I, I was finding myself just sitting on the couch and whatnot. So I took, took up a bit of running, but now training is back now, you know, you, it is it's massively beneficial to you. Definitely, definitely. And we're, we're here to talk about the fact that a man is a, is a Lions Origins club and there are 681 Lions Origins clubs up and down the country. And if, if you want to find out whether your club is has produced a player or two for, for the best club in the world, the British and Irish Lions, then just head to Canterbury.com. There's a, a fantastic map and you can find out. And if you are, you can get some special kit with a nice funky badge on it uh, just to show the, you know, the pride that you are uh, a Lions Origins club. So a man has two uh, famous Lions that have come through the ranks. Uh, Trevor Trevor Reverence, uh, who toured in 1976. Uh, and of course, the, the Welsh wizard himself, the legend, Shane Williams. Uh, Adrian, yeah, seeing as you've been with the club for so long, how, how important to the to the fabric of the club is the fact that you've got two, two icons of, of the sport playing... Uh, coming, having come from your from your neck of the woods, well, we're, you know we're massively proud of the both of them. Um, you know, Trevor was a little bit before my time, but Shane, you know, I grew up with him, yeah. and uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, that, that's, but um, no, we've got grown up with Shane and stuff, and it's a funny one because when he comes to the club, he's not Shane Williams; he's just Shane to us, if you if you know what I mean. So you know, the, obviously, the kids and things look up to him massively and he still does stuff with our under 12s and um you know he still comes down and helps uh, gives a helping hand now and again and passes on his experience but you know he's obviously a very busy bloke as well so um you know so any time he gives to the club we're, we're grateful for but yeah we're, we're immensely proud of them both both of them you know uh, and in the club as well uh, i know shane's british lion shirt has pride of place in the lounge you know and uh you know, everyone seems to flock around that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's yeah, that's awesome to to hear that he still sort of hangs around. Now, we've spoken to a few of these clubs that actually haven't, you know, haven't seen or heard from their their lion for for a long time. So hopefully, these types of things and the things that we're doing and the things at Canterbury and the Lions are doing it would be uh, it would be great if they then see these and and, and want to get back involved. But it sounds like Shane's a top bloke and and is already yeah, yes. No, so, uh, no, 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 like I said, uh, you know, he, he does, he's done so much over, over the years and when he retired, he came back to play a little bit, um, you know, so we managed to play with him uh, as well. So, you know, he's brought, he's brought so much to the club and, you know, his uh, brothers and sisters they, and brother-in-law, they, they do a huge amount for the club as well. So it's not only him, it's a whole family thing and, you know, that, that's what it comes back to as being a family club. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, let's, so, uh, Sort of back to now then. How has how it been back in training, Sean? It's been good. We have had um, decent numbers, in all honesty, considering uh, we've come back from nothing to going straight into training with six, seven weeks before we actually start, hopefully, playing again um, in some, some some form, whatever that will be, you know, is, is another thing. But getting back on the field, having a banter, um, seeing how the effort that the boys put in on the field and to be fair a lot of them have put the effort in during the lockdown as well so some of them are still in decent shape um which is what we wanted really coming back to rugby because it's a short turnaround and to get people match fit in that short period of time is, is pretty difficult but they put the effort in and, and we're just glad to be back out there all together 
How have you managed to uh, keep people engaged over the, the last 15 months? Have you, been, have you been doing what everyone else has been doing and doing the, the fitness challenges and stuff like that to keep people in good nick? Or is it just, ah, do what you want, lads, and we'll see you, we'll see you when we see you? No, no. Um, some have been doing their own fitness challenges. Um, some have been raising money for charities as well. Um, we're pretty good at that sort of thing as a, as a team. You know, um, there's a lot of boys that play they like to raise money for charities, whatever the events that they are doing, they do. Um, and then we've been keeping in touch on social media as well. So I've been giving them some circuits to do, some running to do, which you've got to rely then on them to do it. <laughs> I don't think the props are doing it, but... Uh... <laughs> no, but, um, no, no doubt. It's been pretty good, it's been pretty good in fairness. Excellent. Uh, and Adrian, what what does the summer look like for, for training or, or, or for the club as a whole? Um, well, we didn't really want to start back training that soon because the you know everything was changing so fast. And um, what we found over the summer was we, we started something up, we started training, and then it got taken away again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, we, we didn't want to do that to the boys. We left things settle down a little bit now. And then, you know, we just gradually built things up. It's just having fun uh, for the first couple of sessions. And then, obviously, you know, with games coming up now, hopefully August the 7th, we might have a couple of friendlies just before. But that's all That's all WIU pending, really. But we got the fixtures there ready to go. Everyone can't wait. Um, and it's just getting, getting used to the rules. And, you know, there's so much to do and not a lot of time, really. So, But my main concern is just getting people back onto the field. You know, I'm not too concerned about the results. Um, you know, that... I'm, we're looking forward to January when hopefully the league would start up and, you know, that's our bread and butter then. But apart from that, uh, you know, I got if I got 30 boys training, I want 30 boys out on the field, you know, just getting some game time, getting the knocks out of them and uh, aching until about Thursday after. <laughs> the, the, benefit that we, the benefit that we've got as well um, with the games that are leading up to January is that they're mostly local derbies. So, Hopefully, all the clubs in the area are going to benefit from the local derbies. They'll, they'll have a bit of cash flow going back into the clubs. The boys all know each other. They'll be bumped uh, pre-game, post-game. Uh, the During the game. nonsense will be happening. The usual bits and bobs sticking out <laughs> everywhere in the club as usual. Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> not, not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll say no more. <laughs> uh, so, what, what does the what does the, the club ha have in plans for for this yeah you know, this lion summer that we're we're kind of in the middle of already? Um, well, it's just basically the games are the games are going to be on the club, and you know they're always promoting them and get up there and have a few have a few pints if you can, and uh, just just enjoy. Um, I know we got one. Hopefully, we got one game. Um, down in our look uh, against our local team Bectos, and then um, I know we got an early kick off for that, so we can get back to the club then to to watch the game. So you know, hopefully that'll be a good night that we're all together, and you know, with the first game and stuff, I'm sure there'll be a couple of pints sunk. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. So, 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 where do you see that? Obviously, this season you said the league season starts in January. What are your hopes for that, or is this? Let's just see what happens in January in the season, and then we'll. But we're planning for planning for next year. Sean's shaking his head. No, no, no. They've, they've got up until January to get their heads on the game, and come January, I will be expecting. <laughs> so, so what? So, what are you expecting? Well, I'm expecting wins across the board, uh, home and away. Um, unfortunately, um, at the start of the lockdowns, we were in a position where we should really have gone up to Division 2 from Division 3. Um, I'd like to be in that boat again come end of that season. That, that's my opinion. That's, and that's what I would like. <laughs> uh, if the players, if the players are, are thinking, thinking differently, then uh, they're going to have a kick in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a perfect opportunity to tell them. And, uh, and Adrian, uh, your hopes for sort of the next, I guess, 12 months before? Uh, you know, my, my 
thing is training. All right, I understand that we're amateur team and you know we don't get paid or nothing, and you know, but it's just about communication and coming out training. And I feel like since I started playing, think things have changed. People aren't uh, as bothered about training anymore. Um, you know, whereas you know back when I in my in my prime, shall I say, um, you know. You, you you have to go out training, otherwise you weren't selected on the Saturday. But sometimes, though, because um, some some teams haven't got a, as many players, maybe they think, oh, I just have to turn up on the Saturday. So that's my really big push now is for training and um, obviously, uh, you know, win games and, you know, we're headed for a promotion, hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed for you. Uh, so before before we sort of wrap up with this, sort of the, the last uh, Lions question that I've got, uh, I have to contractually tell you about that Canterbury have a uh, a new jersey which you can go and get promoted uh, is exactly the same as what the Lions are wearing down in South Africa with the the very special collar uh, it's called the Riona which I am told that it it, it means lion in South African uh, but yeah you can head to canterbury.com there's links in all the bios and the, and the descriptions and everything uh, go and get your uh, Riona jersey and if you're a Lions origin match uh, included uh, on the share, uh, uh, it looks great. So uh, yeah, go and do that. So, gents, uh, before we before we wrap up this uh, great chat, it's been great chatting to you. Uh, uh, I just want to go through uh, a couple of Lions memories. Like, what, Adrian, what was uh, you know, what is a Lions memory that sticks out to you? Oh, Craigie, I've like you know I've watched all the Living with Lions videos and stuff and uh, and whatnot. But the main one for me is George North picking Israel Folau up. You know, that just epitomizes what the Lions is about. Is you know, it's giving your all and, you know, it's about going forward. And, you know, that's the one that just sticks out to me, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, yeah, it's a brilliant memory, especially now that we everyone hates uh, Israel for out. But, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. And, uh, and Sean? Um, for, for me, it's uh, a little, little bit further back, back maybe 97. Um, Lions who were down in South Africa. Um, it was Scott Gibbs running over Durant, Os Durant. Um, to me, that just uh, it epitomised the man, what the game's about, everything. His commitment to that run was phenomenal. And uh, I think that is rugby, his commitment. So to me, that, that's probably my favourite moment of all time. Um, you would probably expect us to mention Shane along the line as well. But he's again, he's done so many things in that jersey. It could be one of a number of things. Um, but as a, on a personal note, it would have to be Scott Gibbs and Oz Durant. Uh, yeah, absolutely superb. Yeah, I watched Living with the Lions the other day for about the 10th time during this lockdown. <laughs> uh, and it gets better every time. So, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Two, two, two brilliant memories. Gents, uh, I really appreciate your time. I know you're waiting to go training, so I, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Um, where can we find you on uh, on the social medias? Well, Greg, you just uh, go on Facebook, I'm in United RFC. Uh, Twitter, we're on I'm United RFC as well. So, yeah, just have a look for us and uh, we're on there somewhere. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, been great to chat to you, Adrian and Sean. Um, I look forward to coming and sharing a beer with you when, when we're allowed to. Um, oh, nice. Thanks to uh, thanks for everyone watching. Thanks to Canterbury for for putting these all together. Um, you can catch us on every Lions match day. We'll be uh, we'll, there's uh, nine special episodes. Uh, download the podcast, watch the videos. Check out the uh, fybrugby.com. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.